In this week's video, Shelty doesn't survive in race A. Race B, I will take everybody with this one simple move. And in race C, we see an unbelievable catch by Ghostly. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2023, week 19. And we've got a glorious week this week in terms of a meme is back, as you can see in the background. Before we get into the races though, thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. We're on our way to 40k subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already and you are enjoying the content, please do subscribe it. Nearly 55% of you are now subscribed, which is awesome. Honestly, I hugely appreciate the support. Uh, and thank you so much for watching all the videos, all the content on the channel. Right, let's get back into this race then. Race A, where are we? We are at Special Stage Route X, if you haven't already guessed. And we're in a Bugatti Chiron. Well, in fact, we're in many cars as we look at the race details then. And we're doing one lap here at Special Stage Route X. The rolling starts, comfort soft tyres, and they are hand-picked cars. So we've got the Bugatti in there. We've got the Mercedes Black Series, the AMG Black Series. Uh, we have a Lamborghini event. So there's all sorts in there. And they seem fairly well balanced in the grand scheme of it. I think some are slightly faster than others. But think about it in the race. You're after the one that's best at Slipstream. And also the one that is best with the Nitrous. Because Nitrous is there as well. If you're not going to do this race, but I highly advise you do. If you don't, there are some timestamps there for you. But without further ado, we are doing this race. Let's jump to it now. Let's have a look exactly what happened. And I'll give you a few little tips in there as well. But no lap guide this time. Here we are then at the start of the race. And you can see there, a mixture of cars here. Uh, we've got a Viper in there. We've got the AMG Black Series. We've got Pagani Wire right in front of us. We're in the Chiron. And as you see, Nitrous is here. I absolutely laughed my head off when I saw that. So I'm using a bit here just to get towards the front so I don't lose out. You do not want to lose out on Slipstream here. So, the, you know, if you get close to the front around where I am now, then it's great. Now, I'm literally just going to drive past everybody as best as I can here just because it's just nice to you know get towards that front i'm not gonna go crazy here with nitrous i want to save it all for the end because obviously that's when it's all going to get used so here we are up into p3 they're not too shabby at all i'm gonna fast forward a little bit here go a bit increased speed because not much happens there as uh, so damo then goes for the move there so we do give a bit of a bump draft there big old bump draft as we continue on there and we've got such a run on demo here i decide to stick to the right hand side see what this show on's all about then as we fast forward a little bit more then and continue on down the hill here then uh, so we get a bit of a bump draft there from Shelty, which is nice. No, here we go. No! Shelty, no! No! Oh, no! <laughs> Shelty! Shelty got a little, little tap. We'll have a look at that in the bloopers, of course. But he was helping out so much that Shelty said, would he make turn one in Discord? No, apparently not. Shelty didn't make turn one. And if you crash here, it is pretty much game over in terms of the race. So come out to the oval then. The best line here on the oval, especially the first one at least, without the slipstream, uh, without nit using nitrous, sorry, but using the slipstream, is going to be higher up there. As you see, max power there goes clean on by. So getting up top there on that first oval is going to be benefit you the most rather than sticking down on the inside. So we catch up again. Now this is where strategy comes into play. Where do you want to place your car? Okay, so I'm sitting behind max power here. I'm thinking, okay, I want to stay here. Max power just having the brakes a little bit there or a brake problem. I'm not too sure. It could be one of the two. So I'm going out the slipstream here to come back in there just to avoid bump drafting too much. Let's advance further on then as we get towards the last part of the oval then. And I'm going for the outside line here. And now I choose to start nitrous there. About a quarter of the way around the corner there. We only had three quarters of it left. As we continue on, Blue 42 Thunder, otherwise known as White Tiger, a part of TCR as well, uh, is uh, literally not using Nitrous because they've got to map it. So you can see there, Nitrous making a significant impact here. Ghostly and Lamborghini went clean on by on the inside. That Nitrous helps on an inside line. So I think the inside line may be better on the last corner here. We do get a run on everybody here, but it's not quite enough. And we haven't actually used all our Nitrous either there. So we just used, delayed it a little bit too much there. But it's a good race, this. It's good fun. I would highly recommend it. A mixture of cars there. You can see that. I mean, top three, three different cars. Happy days indeed. Top five, four different cars. So you can really see a good mix there. Right, race B, where we've already jumped to here. We are in group three and we're at the Nürburgring sprint layout. Okay, for this one. So I went with the Porsche for the lap guide. I'm actually in the Nissan. What are we doing here? Well, we're doing six laps here at the Nürburgring sprint layout. It's a rolling start and we're on racing hard tyres. This track, very small for Group 3. I would argue a bit too small for Group 3, if I'm honest with you. It is a bit too small. It feels small as well, especially the hairpin. Let's have a look at the race then. Let's have a look exactly what happened. I will give you a lap guide with this one, but there is a bit of racing action to entertain you. 
Here we are then at the start. Goshina Hurricane. We got Solanke or Simba from KCL there in a 4C. Lots of Porsches. Porsche was definitely dominating the leaderboards when I started this as we kick off. Well, I say I kick off. Somebody else doesn't there. Blue Crystal. Not finding the accelerator there, apparently. So we'll take that position. P15, already a position gained in daily race at B as we head down towards turn one then. Blue 42, Thunder ahead of our TCR, of course. So if you're wondering, I'm using official names now, not nicknames as we go into here. We'll have a look at the TCR names at the very end. I was using nicknames. So we go into the left-hander then. Through we go. Going to head on out of there, down towards this left-hander. We've got Greenland on the inside there. Looking to avoid under there as we go into the left hander and then we're going to go into the right then let's go through here going to try and be opportunistic here got the inside of the beetle there we go job done up another position then as we head towards the hairpin then as we go into the breaking zone then greenland defending off that very nicely in that porsche through we go and be careful of oversteer especially on lap one actually the oversteer is very prominent let's put it that way in terms of wheel spin because the tires are cold remember we do have tight temps in gran turismo the tires are cold and Greenland's about to go into the sand where maybe it's a bit warmer. I'm not too sure. But we'll take that position up into P13 then. Here we go as we head towards the chicane for the first time of six. And entering the braking zone. Here we go then. So we'll get to try and get a good run out this corner then. Clip the first curb and really straight over the second one. And try and boost it out of here as best as we can. We do get a good run on Ampho here. As we look down the inside of the Nissan driver. Into the braking zone we go. Just slowing it down there. Don't think they realised I was there then. And I did slow up a little bit there as we continue on out. You can see that oversteer really having an effect then. Now we have a drag race between me and Ampho. It's Nissan versus Porsche. Who is going to get turn number one first then? Here we go down in towards the breaking zone. We go an ample breaking really late there. Is it too late? Oh, it looks a bit too late actually. As we go in to the right hander and through we go. And Ampho still keeping it there though, to be fair. Going through the left. Here we go. Still side by side. Beautiful bit of racing here with Ampho. And Ampho is going to get that position still. Well played. Look at the gaggle of cars up ahead as well. Lots of people fighting there as we go in to the left hander. And they're going to go in to the right as well. Through we go. Continue on out of there as we actually advance further on then. Because you're not going to really have much action there at the hairpin. Here we go. Lots of penalties up ahead. We've got a Porsche taking a penalty there. To overtake them. We've also got twos that. We've got productions up ahead as well. Now, I can see what's happening here. So I'm going to break early here. Ampho went for the move down the inside. Slight tap on the Porsche. Two taps. Another one who's been off there. They're actually going to get one, two, and... And three positions there, all in a go there. Happy days indeed. As we saw what was happening, we decided to back out of it, take full advantage of the situation. And that is what we did right there as we're side by side with LPT Productions. Um, leaving the last corner, starting lap number three, side by side. It's Porsche versus Porsche, so it should be the same at this moment in time. And I've definitely got the lead over that Porsche. Into the breaking zone we go. Going to slow it down nicely and they back out of that. They get a slight tap from behind there. I'm not sure who tapped them as we continue on there. So up into P7. Happy days. Catch up to Hodgson, a part of TCR. We've got TCR Shelty ahead of them. Going to go through here then. And Hodgson going to go out wide there, clipping the gravel. Be careful doing that because it will slow you down a lot here. And you're seeing here, Hodgson going to have to go defensive then as we head towards the chicane. I'd advise not going too wide at the chicane. But because I know Hodgson's a part of TCR... I know that we can race clean enough where it will happen. Otherwise, anybody else I would expect to die, essentially, by contact. But we race clean there. Beautiful bit of side by side action through the chicane. And we're up into Steve and mine. Favorite position. Everyone's favorite position, actually. Not just mine and Steve's. It's P6 as we continue on through there. We're actually going to advance to the very end there because not much happens. I couldn't catch Shelty in time in that Audi R8. And that is the end of the race. Finishing in that cursed position. P6. So I did enjoy that race to be fair and you saw the smile on my face. Let's jump to the track guide then. Let me tell you how to do this circuit then. We're in the Nissan for this one but I'm going to give you multiple braking zones. You've got the tree on the right or the end of the tarmac on the left hand side. You can use either of these as brake markers here in group 3 as we head into the braking zone. They actually want to break earlier than you think here. Because you really want to get a tight line and just get out the corner as quick as possible. Just be careful about the bump and any power oversteer on exit. Head over towards the right side. Literally in the middle of the circuit. Then come left here. And what you're actually looking for there is that little tower. Now, in the race, it's a bit more obvious uh, that you can see that. There's also an orange painted barrier a bit further along that you can use as well. So you're really looking for that tower to accelerate out of that corner. Head over towards the right hand side. And then what I use generally is that lamppost on the left hand side. What you can also use, depending on the time of day, of course, on this track, but it's a bit harder to see in the race, is the change in... Uh, in, in material layout on the right hand side. Really to here, you want to really touch the grippy stuff on the inside there and then go towards the right hand side, cut this a lot and actually go out wide a little bit here. You can go over that white line and be absolutely fine there in terms of dirty tyres. 
As we head towards this right-hander, you ever want to use the 100-meter board, the start of the curb that I've highlighted there next to the 100-meter board. Or if you want to break really early, you can use the gantry above as well. I haven't marked that out because I'm trying to break as close to that 100 as possible. Now, you sort of go out and come back in here, and you really want to be careful next here. A lot of power obviously will happen in a lot of cars there. Do be careful as we head over towards the right-hand side then. And what you want to use here is either the white line or try and get as close to the 50 as possible. I kind of use the white line here, so when it becomes obvious it's there, I then hit the brakes and turn in and try and go for an early apex to uh, try and really boot it out as quick as possible. Oh, it was left inside then, and on the right side, as that tarmac closes up towards the curb, where the grass sort of becomes more obvious, I'm braking just before that hits the edge of your screen. And you sort of dab in the brake here, and you're wanting a later apex here so you don't run wide. Remember, we saw that in the race, people running wide in a gravel area, it will cost you a lot of time. Right, we're going to race on now towards the chicane. The chicane, always a very tricky situation because it's a lot of weight transfer, which is exaggerated in Gran Turismo. But in terms of the braking zone, the 100 meter board, all the starts of the wider sort of um, drainage there that you can see, that is your brake marker here. As you see, I brake there. Now, you want to cut quite a lot of the first part, so you can straight line the second part. You can cut a lot of the second part, to be fair as we continue on out of there then and head towards the last corner where we're actually going to be looking on the left hand side for that orange painted barrier or the marshals if they're there of course depending on the situation uh, but i'm using that as my brake mark here and i'm going to start to toward, turn towards the corner as well as i go onto the brakes keep it tight here be careful on exit with power over there and that is a lap of the nurburgring sprint layout in a group three car that is it for race B. Let's jump to race C. When we head to Australia then for this one, where we are in Group 4 machinery. And as you can see, a very mixed grid in the background. What exactly are we doing here? Well, we are racing eight laps here at Bathurst in Group 4. It's a rolling start. The racing medium tyres are available, but only the hards are required. So it is a no-stop race here. Even though the fuel is on time six, tyre wear is times three. It is a bit of a fuel saver, but it's not a massive, massive, massive fuel saver. Okay, so just be careful with that. That is it in terms of the race details. I'd say lots of cars have been tried out here, which is good. I went with the Ferrari. Let's jump to the race and I'll show you exactly what happens as well as give you some tips and a track guide straight after that. Right then, here we go. We've got a Huracan in pole position. We've got an SLS in there. A mixture of all sorts of cars, as you saw in the B-roll before this race. Uh, and here we go. I couldn't get my Thrustmaster TGT to work. So if you didn't watch the channel update video, um, I am going to replace that wheel because it's atrocious. Right, let's get into the race then, because obviously the rolling start does mean you don't really get into some racing until you get halfway into any lap, apparently. So we're going to go into here. We have been saving fuel behind uh, Thunder there as we go past them and head down the mountain for the first time of asking here. So if you are stuck behind somebody on the mountain, especially going up it, just short shift like crazy. Save the fuel for when you really need it on a straight to absolutely fly past somebody. Here you go. You notice that real big short shift up into fifth before we even saw fourth there in terms of the revs as we go into the left hand at the rev bar there is what i mentioned so here we go this is where we can put our foot to the floor and continue on out of there and here we go we've got p13 black going towards the right hand side of that nissan sylvia so we've got to choose somebody to overtake here or bump draft should i say so i can't make it three wide there so i choose the mclaren driver then and here we go so i'm gonna use some more of those revs the Nissan Sylvia changes gear then. We're going to go down the inside. I'm just going to be a bit careful here as we go into the braking zone then. That is up another position. Now, if you're wondering how to fuel save the best way possible, I'm going to link a video at the end of this video where I go into detail of how to fuel save. And this is why I've chosen the Ferrari as well. I'll let you will understand a bit more. We get a good run out of turn one then on the McLaren driver. So I'm now going to try and get past them as quick as possible here. Use as much fuel as I can to get past them before we then look to try and fuel save a little bit here. As you can see there, some fighting going on ahead. Chelsea looking down the inside of Hodgson then in towards breaking zone. We go. And once again, look, we've caught up to Ghosty here. So this is where we're now going to start short shifting because we can't really make moves here. So again, look, fourth to fifth, so early on. I'm actually in sixth there, just chilling. I could, I could have even been in seventh there as we go down the hill then. Oh, Ghosty gets it also wrong in the Huracan. Rescues it, to be fair. Does rescue it there. As we go through the left hand. Oh! ghostly oh 0.5 second penalty so we advance further on then got past ghostly in terms of the penalty oh hello somebody's off there oh Muscafi is off oh no in the is that an evo i think that was an evo no it's a this time sylvia still i thought that was an evo then it looks very evo-esque uh, as we look to catch up to hodgson then in the mclaren as we go into left hand hodgson's having a mclaren day it looks like as we continue on out of there then to up into well yeah <laughs> what do you know p6 uh, as we continue on to lap number three then 
as we look to try and... Well, we're going to do what we've been doing all race so far. Use all the fuel on the straights and then save going up the mountain. So here we go then. Continue on out of there using all our revs here. We've got lots of fuel available to us, of course. It was an eight lap race and we've still got seven and a half laps of fuel. But when you do hit the revs, it does go down very quickly. These multipliers are all about, you know, maximizing the fuel where you need it. So I'm going to look now. Got the slipstream run down the inside. Got a good overlap here. In towards the braking zone we go. And uh, ooh, very tight there. Ran very close. But just enough room there for a Ferrari as we continue on to the other side of the track then. Uh, behind Hodgson once again then. And Hodgson's been using a lot of fuel here to accelerate away, I think, as well. But here we go, seventh gear. We're really pushing on here in terms of speed then. Looking at, towards the inside, maybe. Oh, we're going for it. Here we go. We sent it. Oh, we got it stopped as well. Oh, we're in the wrong gear. Get to second. Did your weapon. Continue on out of there then. Up into third. Up into fourth gear then. And it looks like we're going to get past here just then. Looking at radar. And done. There we go. As we go into it. Oh, hello. What's happening there? Oh, Hodgson. Did you clip the grass there? Did I run him too tight? Oh, I'm not too sure. Well, have a look at the replay. That's just definitely what I thought at the time as well. That was uh, definitely interesting what happened. But I say we'll have a look at the bloopers for that one and see exactly what went down as we look to catch Shelty in that Peugeot RCZ. So Shelty is towards that left-hand side. Once again, I'm using all the fuel here. Go out down the inside. Try not to put Shelty into Narnia there as I lifted a little bit through the, uh, the right-hand kink there. I continue on out. I'm in P4 now. Now, I knew P1 was on mediums because they said, damn it, wrong tyres at the start of the race. You can't see that because of my face. Um, so I knew that, you know, we're in a fight here as we catch up to Walker Paul here. As Oh, they hit that curb. Do not hit that curb. It can be dangerous there. And I actually got a bit of understeer there from just being so distracted. Apparently, by that Mercedes SLS. I'm not sure whether that was a hazard or an indicator. I couldn't really see the other right-hand one, but it's all good. It's all good, Paul. It's all good. As we go through the left-hander then, we're only three, uh, nearly four seconds off, actually, the leader here as we continue on to the next lap. Every time I try to go for a faster slap, I'd always catch up to somebody, which was interesting. Uh, we definitely got really good pace in this Ferrari. I mean, I'm talking like two 11s are possible, even with a fuel saving in this race, like on hard tyres. It's really, really, really good as we continue on out of there. Maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating 211. Definitely, definitely 212s. Uh, maybe a high 211 is impossible. I don't know. I felt really pacey though here. I really did. As we go past that Mercedes SLS and continue on towards the right hander there. We've got a bit of a flash then as well, I think. So say hello maybe. I'm not too sure. Continue on through there. Nearly losing it a little bit then as we advance towards this straight now and we're catching up to Stairmos here. As they've got a penalty as well. It's going to have a really big run on them. An absolutely insane run here. Three tenths down, currently on our fastest lap. Down the inside of them we go. The Mitsubishi Lancer with, an e with a Subaru livery on, of course. That's a Mikhail special there with that cursed livery. Hit you on through then. And here we go, heading towards the final lap then. I'm actually going to go over the crest of the hill and see them in the pit sense. They're going to take the change of tyre. Definitely don't change the tyres here. It is a no-stop race, as you're seeing right here. No real problems with tyre wear. No, no huge problems with fuel. Oh, they've gone off behind here. We advance towards the end then, as we did get a fast slap on lap seven. There's definitely two 12s in there. Is there a 211? I reckon a Super Aiden could get a 211 there on hard tyres in the Ferrari. And the Ferrari, for me, is the go-to car. You can save lots of fuel, and it's a very nice car to drive with some good top end as well. Let's talk about a track guide there. I'm going to head towards turn one. And what you can use, you can use many things here, okay? you got left inside the stadium. On the right hand side, you got a photographer. Or you got the lamppost as well. You can use any of those in terms of your brake marker as we head into turn one. Now, be careful about hitting that curve. You don't want to hit it. But you do want to use all of the outside here and advance out of there. We're going to fast forward a little bit down the straight, of course as we head towards the right-hander then. And once again here, you're going to use some tarmac that I always use here. So you can either use the start of it or the end of it, depending on your tyre compound, your tyre wear. But I always try and aim for the end of it there as a good brake marker. You want to get really tight to this corner, okay? The further right you are, the more wide you will go. There's not a lot of grip out there. All the grip is on the inside. Just be careful of the barrier on the exit. As you head up here, normally you're going to want a slight lift here as you go into here. And then what you're looking for is that white line when it goes straight there. You can see it curves, go straight, and then sharp turn. As you see that, that is going to be your brake marker. And you're going to want to brake in a straight line, okay? But try not to go too wide here. Keep it tight on this bit here. It really helps you round. And then boot it out of there, just being careful of any power oversteer. So this is all flat, basically, with slight lifts. Then you got that tree on the right hand side. That's your turn in marker. I love that tree. It's a really helpful tree. Thank you for planting it, Australia. <laughs> but even so, we're going to go into the right-hander here, and we turn in. Now, you might want to lift. Sometimes you will not need to lift like there. 
as we go over the crest of the hill. You're going to head down here, and you're going to have a slight lift at the bottom of the hill here, potentially. Oh, there we go. We're doing the lift on the curb instead, but it's actually better at the bottom of the hill there. And as you head towards the crest here, going into that left-hander, you're going to want to lift off a little bit here. It means that the weight is going to go a bit more over the front, and you're going to end up with more of a 50-50 weight as you go over here. So then the car's not going to understeer, because if you're fully accelerating, the front's going to lift, and you're going to fly up and get a load of understeer. So just be careful of that. Heading down the hill then, the middle bottom square is what you're aiming for. The Audi R8 sign or the building is what you can use as a brake mark here. But you want to brake in a straight line, okay? So you turn, brake in a straight line, lift a little bit, brake in a straight line, and slow the car down. Do not 100% brake and turn at the same time. You will spin or you might have some weird weight transition like ghostly. But in the left here then, you're going to use the end of the curb on the right-hand side there. Just turn in, just being careful. I do a dab of the brake there. Boot it out of there as quick as possible and try and really hamper the car down here. As we head down the hill more here, or the mountain, should I say. On the right side, you've got the black to grey barrier on the right side there. It's a slight lift and a dab of the brakes here to really slow it down here. And then you're going to brake in a straight line there as you go down the hill. Once again, do not turn. And be careful of the barrier on the exit here. But be careful about turning and braking here at Bathurst. You don't want to be doing it. So it's either 100% braking, no turning, or like 50-50. Think of it that way. We're going to head towards the left hand of them. We're going to use my famous brake marker here, the actual V in sign event, or sig nervent, as I used to say, or the 150 meter board, but sometimes that will get taken out. So I always use the V there, and it's a really helpful, helpful, helpful brake marker there. So don't absolutely fuse the curve there. Just get close to it and accelerate out of there. Head over towards the left and then over towards the right hand side. And we're looking once again for a lovely tree in Australia there on the right hand side. As that hits the edge of your screen is when you're going to brake. Okay. And you're going to drop down to around second gear in the Ferrari. I think it is. Uh, but be careful about using the curb on the inside on this corner because it will bounce you off. So always try and avoid it where you can. It's a bit bumpy as well on exit. So you will get some power oversteer as well. But that is a lap of Bathurst in a nutshell. That's it in terms of race C. Let's have a look at the bloopers then, where we head straight away to Spurs Stage Route X. And here is what happened to Shelty then. So, bump drafting me away here. And let's see there. You can see it's a bit, or oh, it gets very awkward when you're being bump drafted and bump draft in as we get slight taps there. Oh, oh, just a slight tap on the rear. It's, it's a pure mistake there. But you can see the impact there on Shelty. Shelty loses the initial pack. And in fact, we're going to lose a few more there as well as they go clean on by. So, Shelty's sort of out the race at that point. So do be careful of that. Right, race B then. We've got the move here by the French driver. Uh, and it looks more just like a mistake there. They sort of looked on the inside, just misjudged it a little bit there. And then a misjudgment there by Anubis. Uh, I'm not sure what your PSM was because it changes it in the replay. So that's all that was. Now, did I run Hodgson tight here? Or two, didn't I not give enough room? Let's head down here. I did get past here. So I am past at this moment in time. And then I think Hodgson just took, took avoiding action a little bit with a slight movement there from me, maybe. Uh, which I, I just think that was more avoiding action than anything there. It wasn't really my fault because I was ahead at that point in time. So it is what it is there, I would say. Uh, so we are going to end the video right there. I do hope you enjoyed uh, this video, folks. Quite a short one in the grand scheme of it. Some good races this week. I quite enjoyed this week, to be fair. Race B is a bit meh because I think it's a bit too small, but it is what it is. That is it. As I say, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do give it a like on the way out. And I hope to see you in another video. I'll live stream again very, very, very soon.